Sam, no, Sam, that's that's not how we do it. Let me show you how we take care of the creature. Leia, let me show you how we take care of the creature. Go, Rita! Get him! Get him! Get him! What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back going to a new video. Today, we're going to be checking out leftist losing eights. The best of Kamala Harris supporters going mad. Okay, this is going to be amazing. Let's check this video out together. It's time for lefties losing it. Here is a lefty well and truly losing it, claiming that telling him you're voting for Donald Trump is among the most dehumanizing things you can do. The narcissism, the entitlement here is off the charts. Oh, I'm not transphobic, but, but what exactly? You're about to tell me the most dehumanizing thing I've ever heard of you believe about trans people? You're about to tell me you're voting for Trump? You're about to tell me that you don't think trans women should use a women's bathroom. If you need to put a disclaimer and that but, maybe keep that thought to yourself. Maybe let's try and think of another thought. Fake nails until eyeshadow don't make you a woman. XX Thank chromosomes you. do. I don't write the rules. Uh, talking about entitled and narcissistic, check out this British lady having an almighty meltdown because a polite driver called her Miss. You see, she doesn't identify as Miss. I'm telling you, it's a freaking problem. And I'm saying to you, thank you, Miss. And, yeah. and then all of a sudden, you, you start to you start to be angry. Why would you say thank you, Miss? I don't. Because I'm trying to be polite. But how do you know I don't I identify as a Miss? I might be a Miss. Identify? Yeah. I, I might be something else. I don't know. What, uh, I'm not asking for identification ID. I'm just saying thank <laughs> well, you, Miss. I think it was disrespectful. How, yeah. how is it disrespectful? Because you don't know me. I've literally just got in your cab. Yeah, and you said nice I've car, been in and the then car I said thank you, Miss. Five minutes. Okay. And you okay. call me Miss when it's not your place, is it? You're it's not, not family. Right. You're not a friend. But I'm trying to be polite, saying thank you, Miss. Well, I don't think that's polite. I think that's disrespectful. Disrespectful to what? To me. How, how is it disrespectful for how you? How do you know I identify as anything? What do you mean, identify? You know, like gender. Gender? Yeah. What do you mean I by gender? I might be a they. A they? You know, you're, you're that. You're a woman. Be... You're a woman over here. I can see you're my eyes. Right, okay. Okay. So that makes it okay. Uh, okay for what? Uh, you 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 you're giving me complimenting so and then I, I and then I give you, you thank you. If I was to say to you thank you, mister, do you yes. think that's all right? You of don't course. think that sounds disrespectful? You're, usually people in England uh, using English they say sir. So maybe you say sir, I don't know. Hey, mister is okay. But uh, <laughs> maybe you don't have education, so maybe you only oh. say mister. So I have okay. That poor dude slap. isn't paid enough to put up with that craziness. It's so crazy that I'm suspecting it's some sort of a setup, but these people do actually exist. Now, crazy mm -hmm. sums up this next clip. Mother, Mother I hate this. No, Sam, that's not how we do it. Let me show you how we take care of the creature. Let me show you how we take care of the creature. Go, Rita! How clever to destroy your own property. Yeah, that's really going to show BB who's boss. Now, you have to give Charlie Kirk credit here. Not only does he go to college campuses and seeks to have dialogue with the lefties, but he manages to keep his cool and his manners, even yeah. when the lefties are as obnoxious and odious as this next dude who asks him what drug he's going to overdose on if Trump loses. When Kamala wins and when you go into manic spirals, everything you've worked for crumbles around you, uh, what unless it you're going to overdose on? So if oh, Trump wins, what are you going to do to yourself? Okay. Uh, I don't know. Probably move to the Netherlands. I don't want to deal with them. Can you answer the question, though? Um, Snowflake? Well, I, I hope that Trump... Answer the question, Snowflake. I hope Trump wins. Kamala might win. Answer the question, Let coward, me tell you what happens. Coward. So let me tell you what happens. Uh, if Kamala Harris wins, which she might, him. unlike you, I will not you flee have? my country. I will go back to work the next day if Kamala mm -hmm. Harris wins. Right. And you might be right. Kamala might win. It might be too much. But I'll be able to look my daughter and my son in the eye and say I did everything I possibly could to make sure that this country remained free and prosperous for you guys and that I gave it all on the line. But Good you luck might... with that, buddy. Kamala sweep. Kamala sweep. See, this is what happens when you don't discipline your children. Imagine hiring that dude one day. Now to a young woman who doesn't need a job. She didn't even need school. She was too busy gallivanting around the world, telling presidents and prime ministers how to run their countries. 
And now Greta Thunberg is here to tell us why her anti-Israel crusade is linked to climate change. Mm. In Palestine and all over the world, the fight against colonialism and corporations' destruction of the planet are intrinsically linked. Look at Chevron. Everyone knows that Chevron is one of the world's biggest climate criminals. But the oil giant is also fueling Israel's genocide in Palestine. As Israel bombs hospitals, homes and schools in Gaza, Chevron supplies them with energy from two Israeli-claimed gas fields in the Mediterranean, making millions in the process. Ending Israel's genocide in Gaza and Israeli apartheid is a climate justice issue. Israel is destroying Palestinian lives, but also destroying Palestinian lands and resources through its warfare and industries that pollute and destroy the environment. We can't stand by and do nothing. Oh dear, just like her catastrophist global warming nonsense, just about every word she utters there is devoid of sense, facts. But remember, that didn't stop several world leaders from allowing that simpleton's activism and the climate cult to damage their energy security and with it, their economies and the prosperity of their people. And far from destroying the natural environment, Israel plants millions of trees every year. In fact, in 1948, they only had around 2% of the country covered in trees. Now that figure is around 8.5%. You'd think mm. Greta and the Greenies would be happy about that. Now to a young lady who needs Jesus, like seriously. I love killing babies. I love Jesus it. Walking. Jesus walking. We have to give her the word. I've had like 45 abortions and I'm going to keep having them. You need to Fox News now and watch here as a lefty Patrick Murphy <laughs> is uh, trying to push Biden's inflation lies. But there's a fact check coming from host Harris Faulkner and it's beautiful. So wait a minute, what did you say inflation was when, when Biden took over? I said inflation was it was up at high at 9%. It's now down to 3.2%. No, no, no. When he took over from Trump, it was 1.4%. Yeah, and there was yes. also eight, okay. but I just, there's also I want to make sure because Biden though. says it was at nine percent, and I don't want you to get confused yeah. with his that with was his debunked his was. like you know false talking point. But Time to check in with the Veep and her many accents. This is a uh, urban Kamala, Kamala from the block. Brother, we are not going back. We are not going back. We are not going back. This next one, I detect a Hispanic tone. In fact, recently I was in Nevada. I'm, I'm in these streets, let me tell you, I'm everywhere. <laughs> um, I love you back. And let's take a trip down memory lane and have a look at the man who gave Kamala her big break, Willie Brown, who was 60 and the powerful Speaker of the California Assembly when he had a romantic relationship with 29-year-old Kamala and appointed her to two well-paid state board positions. And the rest, as they say, is history. He's a rogue, all right, notorious for his flamboyant lifestyle. Flashy clothes, fancy parties, fine women, and fast cars. You should from now on address me as If ever a man and a municipality were made for each other, it is this man, this place. And this next young lady still hasn't forgiven Kamala for that Willie Brown dalliance. The left is trying to tout this woman as a savior for the black community, but all she's done is hurt the black community since she came into the game. See, the first step in destroying the black community is to dismantle the black family. So aside from her record as a Thank prosecutor, you. why don't we ask Mrs. Willie Brown if Kamala Harris cares about black families? Now, if you're ever confused about what the America First agenda is all about, then have a listen to Donald Trump here. Give a warning to John Deere, manufacturer of agricultural machinery and heavy equipment. This is America First. I just noticed behind me John Deere tractors. I know a lot about John Deere. I love the company. But uh, as you know, they've announced uh, a few days ago that they're going to move a lot of their manufacturing business to Mexico. I'm just uh, notifying John Deere right now. If you do that, 
We're putting a 200 percent tariff on everything that you want to sell into the United States <laughs> so that if I win, John Deere is going to be paying a 200 percent. Joining me now is documentary filmmaker and commentator Army Horowitz. Army, John Deere announced earlier this year that they would lay off hundreds of workers, I think around 600 odd, at their three of their plants and shift production from those plants to Mexico by the end of 2026. What we saw there from Trump is precisely what he needs to go back to. That's America first. Yeah, I, I don't agree with you on this one. Um, this is, in my view, uh, an example of neo-mercantilism, uh, the idea that there is a static amount of wealth in the world and that all nation states are competing for it and that all trade is zero sum. I don't believe that. It's not what capitalism and the free market is all about. We've had... Uh, you know, more modern examples of how tariffs and duties have hurt our country, for example, Smith-Hawley Tariff Act, uh, which, in fact, when it raised its, its tariffs and duties, it lengthened and deepened the Great Depression. These are not the way to proceed. Uh, look, there are, there are uses for tariffs. For example, how Trump used it in his first administration to punish and punitively against China when China was doing things like dumping mm -hmm. steel tariffs on our products. That's a proper use for tariffs when you're trying to engage in a country who's attacking you. But to use it against an American country who's simply looking for a more efficient way to build their, their manufacturing facilities because we have an inefficient labor system and a regulatory market is not the proper way to use tariffs. I'm sorry. Well, I disagree wholeheartedly. I understand the, the principles you talk about there, but in practice, we're talking about hundreds of well-paid American jobs, often in areas where uh, there are not other jobs for those workers to go to. And as a leader, his number one priority should be the welfare of Americans. And, sure. uh, and that put, means putting pressure on companies to uh, have a little bit of loyalty to their home country, then so be it. You see other countries using tariffs to protect their industries uh, extensively throughout Europe, Asia. I, I don't see why America should hamstring itself to have this free trade when, when other countries don't play by those rules, but we could debate this for a long time. Uh, let's talk about Vice President Kamala Harris, because she's uh, reportedly uh, going to be back at the southern border, this time in Arizona. She is the border czar. She, she was telling us in 2022 the border is secure. Now she says it needs work, but it's all Donald Trump's fault. Would you call the border secure? The border is secure. You're confident this border is secure? We have a secure border. After decades in law enforcement, I know the importance of safety and security, especially at our border. As president, I will bring back the bipartisan border security bill that he killed, and I will sign it into law. Army, this uh, visit, I think, is going to be only the second time she's visited the border since she got that border czar role, or whatever she wants to call it nowadays. Uh, is she going to be able to convince Americans that she cares about border security? She's, she's got a long history of advocating for all sorts of benefits for illegal immigrants, saying illegal immigration isn't a crime. There's a chant she was leading back in 2018 that's just gone viral where she's saying down with de deportations. It's clear where her values lie. Is she going to be able to convince Americans that she's serious about cutting the numbers com coming across illegally? No. I mean, this is what you call national gaslighting. Her trying to reframe herself as a border hawk? You have got to be kidding me. And nobody's believing it because she's down double digits on the immigration issue, the sick, second biggest issue that Americans care about. Look, if she wanted, in fact, be tough on the border, she had three, she almost four years to do it under the Biden-Harris administration. She was, well, I don't want to use the word border czar because I never used the word border czar. She was just in charge of the border, right? I don't know, what could she have done? Well, she could have tried to do a, done a border deal before last year or this, earlier this year. What else could she have done? She could have maybe implemented what Trump had done to stop illegal immigration into our country. For example, she could have simply done remain in Mexico, maybe the greatest tool we ever had to keep illegals out of our country. She could have continued to build the wall. She could have had increased deportations. Look. We have the receipts on you, Kamala. We don't have to guess 
at what your policies would be. We've had years of it, and we've had you talking about it. We've had 11 and a half million people at least cross into our border illegally. We know you wanted to abolish ICE, and of course, we heard you chanting. We have a video of you chanting, no more deportations with, by the way, I'm so glad I'm able to pick up this name again, the great Jussie Smollett. Oh, I miss talking about him. I wish we could bring him back in the news. I think we just did. <laughs> you did. Don't, don't ever miss a chance to mention Jussie. Uh, that was still one of the... Uh most extraordinary news events of the last decade. Uh, now to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. He's visited an ammunition manufacturing plant in Pennsylvania, which has been instrumental in supplying Ukraine with munitions. But it's his campaigning for the Harris Walls team that is raising more than a few eyebrows, Army. Uh, how is this visit being viewed and uh, what's the commentary been like in the US? I cannot believe this has not been covered more by the American media. That is truly, truly unbelievable. Look, what do we have here? We have a foreign leader who's being flown in by the administration to Pennsylvania, the most battlegroundy states of the battleground states, ostensibly to go tour a, 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 a munitions facility. But guess what? He didn't have to go to Pennsylvania. This is so politically brazen, it's unbelievable. He didn't have to go to Pennsylvania. He could have, we supplied him with weapons built all across the United States. He could have gone to Ohio, South Carolina, Alabama. All these places are building weapons for Ukraine. But they sent him to Pennsylvania, and he should have said no. This is a tactical and strategic mistake for Ukraine because he needs Republicans to vote for packages for Ukraine. We passed a package for aid to Ukraine because the Republican House passed it over. And by the way, Zelensky, Trump may become president, and the guy has a pretty thin skin when you hit him. <laughs> this is a massive mistake, and I cannot believe it's not being more covered. And you're a Ukraine supporter. You uh, support their cause. You support the fight. And if you're questioning the uh, the judgment here of President Zelensky to participate in this sort of political campaigning for the Harris uh, camp, I think that says plenty. And you're right. If Trump becomes president again, what what does that mean? Is he going to remember this and uh, hold it against President Zelensky when they next negotiate for a for a package? It, it just seems to be a uh, ill thought out decision on his part. Now let's go to uh, Springfield, Ohio, the uh, the town that Trump put on the map when he mentioned. Uh, that or he alleged there were cats and dogs being eaten. The residents there are continuing to uh, lift the lid on the impact of up to 20,000 immigrants from Haiti being deposited into their small town. Here's one young woman's viral post. Driving through Springfield, Ohio, I am terrified to drive my car through Springfield, Ohio. It is a scary place to drive your car through. Um, they do not know what lane to turn from. They do not know any traffic laws. So I know I'm not the only one, but I've been stalked through stores by Haitian men. And Vivek Ramaswamy was in Springfield as well. And he heard from a father who explained that his son, who serves in the US Army in Germany, can't bring his wife and his uh, newborn child to America unless he enlists for another four years. He's married over there. He's going to be having a baby next month. For him to get the baby to come here to the United States and his wife, he has to do four more years. But the Haitians come over here and get everything. So, so in order for, I missed that. because For them to get their visa, their plane ticket, he has to do four more years. It's a fair question, Army. Uh, when you're seeing the, these immigrants from Haiti uh, coming in, no questions asked, and then you've got someone who's serving their country and he can't bring his own child unless he enlists for another four years. You can understand why so many in that community are upset for a variety of reasons. Look, this is, again, another example of why uh, immigration is one of the, is, again, I'll, I'll continue to say it because it's important and it's true, it's the second most important issue outside of the economy that we have in our country. And of course, it is a spectacular fail for the Harris-Biden administration. 
Um, also, look, again, I don't want to continue to beat a dead horse. It does also highlight the failure of Trump when he had to... There's no reason to create a false argument, such as the pets being eaten in Ohio, in Springfield, Ohio, when you have real problems in Springfield, Ohio, uh, highlighted by that woman we just saw. Now, of course, the left keep trying to, to frame this as a race-based issue. Why are you attacking mm. Springfield, Ohio, the Asians? Because they're all black. But look, I don't know. I just saw that video. That woman, she, she kind of looked black to me. I'm not sure. I don't see race. No, and I don't think it's, it's a cultural issue. I heard an American uh, black... African-American pastor talk about this and he said this isn't a race issue. But I want to ask you about Macklemore. We uh, discussed him on last night's show. He had this mad rant on stage encouraging the crowd to chant F America and also made various claims about Israel. Um, yeah, f America. <laughs> October 7th happens and I start paying attention and I start I started learning. It's a genocide, absolutely. And it has been since 1948. Don't get it twisted. He went on and on. You don't want to hear any more, Army. But he joins a long list of celebrities, I've got to say, who have used their platforms to push this anti-Israeli agenda. We've had uh, Susan Sarandon, an uh, Oscar-winning actress, who said the October 7 rape claims were myths. And we had uh, supermodel Bella Hadid, who's implied that Hamas treat their hostages better than Israel treats Palestinian detainees. There's a whole long list of celebs who've uh, uh, been very critical of Israel, to say the least. Even Jewish film directors have condemned Israel. Have a listen to Jonathan Glazer's acceptance speech at the Oscars and Sarah Freeland's uh, speech at the Venice Film Festival. Right now we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people. I must note, I'm accepting this award on the 336th day of Israel's genocide in Gaza and 76th year of occupation. Army, uh, you expect the entertainment industry to be supportive of the only real democracy in the Middle East, but that's not evident these days. Yeah, you'd be mistaken if you would think that, oh, you're so naive, Rita. Oh, little poor na naive, Rita. Look, uh, Macklemore in particular, he went on, by the way, also to trash America. I said how much, said how much he hates America. I, I don't know if you guys talked about it last night, but he had his concert a couple of years ago. He went on stage as a rabbi with a big hook-nosed Jew uh, jumping around and singing about yeah. being cheap with his song, uh, with, with his song Thrift Store. It's a very good song. No, he's a disgusting person, disgusting human being, and is exemplifying it here with that. Yeah, and it was very odd because during that rant, he mentioned that he really got an interest in this issue post-October 7. So that, to me, is pretty shocking in itself, that that's when he decided to take a closer look and he came out condemning Israel, which was attacked on October 7. So uh, I do not understand that at all. Um, Ami Horowitz, uh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. OK, this was amazing to watch. Um, the best of Kamala Harris supporters going mad. OK, this is the reason why I love Sky News. <laughs> a lot. I love Sky News. I love this woman big time. Because why, 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 the reason why I love her is because she exposed what um, the US media mostly don't bring out. She brings out it's raw. Left is going mad. Left is going off. Um, this was amazing to watch. Let's start from the start. The, the trans person who was like saying nonsense. They flew out by the people who broke their own TV because they saw a right wing man and they were pissed. So, in what way do you hurt him? You, you're just hurting yourself because you damage your, your TV. You've actually lose some money already because you, you have to replace back that TV. <laughs> you see? It's, it's, it's funny because some people are going, really going mad. A lot of Kamala Harris fans are, or supporters that are all going crazy. One after the other. Then we'll go, Yen Kamala Harris where it's that the borders are being um, shot, is under control. We ask a slide. A lot of people are coming to America every day in their numbers. The border is open. Let me tell you that. The border is not under control. Because I have, Charlie Kirk have said it. I said, Charlie Kirk, if you go make your own research on your phone right now, you'll see it. The border is not in control. 
she was just saying it's for political um so people would have been like okay the borders are trying to control is that trying to control during 2022 trump was not a president at that time 2024 she's still blaming trump for the border me you know for the border that is not control trump was actually building a war you just stopped it kamala harris is always looking for a way to blame trump every single time she doesn't want to blame trump every time that's how she talked about the blood bats she always wants to make or paint trump as a bad guy and she the savior she's a superman and trump is a villain that's how she always make her speech to be like that trump is a bad person at least we can see this with our own eyes that she's an hypocrite um springfield ohio what is happening there is really 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 dangerous about the pets people eating pets they were talking about it right here and there's reasons to believe that comment down below think about this video give us a thumbs up share this video to us. Minas, us subscribe to our channel guys i will see you guys in the next video make sure you stay safe